I must also say a big thank you to all those people who are messaging me about the videos uh, that I've been making recently and sending me emails as well. For that, I'm very grateful. Now, unless, of course, you've been living on a desert island, you will notice that the um, mainstream media has given consent. up electricity prices are going up and on top of that some energy companies have gone uh, have folded due to for various reasons now this week several of our clients expressed concern about this and they were quite amazed to find out that we've actually cut our fuel bills from 161 pound a month every month by direct debit to 101 pound a month we're on our budget plan and they were amazed that this has been done without change of supplier any change of tariff or contract and at their request we're making this video because we hope that everyone else can actually do the same thing now there is no reason why if you follow what i'm about to teach you now that everyone can't make the same savings now the minister for energy and the energy companies will be very grateful if everyone in the country can make such huge savings works out about 38.5 to 38 percent of energy to their costs now if we all did that then the health then the minister for energy and the uh, energy companies will be very grateful for the simple reason it saves them the expense of building power stations i do energy uh, brokering part-time on a commercial basis on a very super part-time basis and trust me when I say that building, uh, building power stations is more expensive than you can imagine. So let me go for, uh, for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to teach you how to massively cut your energy uh, bills without changing supplier, without, to explain, to explain, without changing supplier, without changing contract or tariff. Okay. What I'm also going to teach you is simple low cost or no cost methods that you can implement today to cut your fuel bills. OK, now the first thing I can hear you saying is what on earth is a fitness instructor doing teaching this? Well, there's two reasons. Firstly, the number one, or the, the second commonest reason for people to say they don't want to train with me because they can't afford it. So I give them information how to cut their bills. Number two, the commonest cause of obesity is poverty and I was laughed at when I first said this in 2008 and I wrote a blog about this and I was absolutely pasted but what then went and happened was in 2015 the Fabian Society released their report called Hungry for Change and they they confirmed everything that I wrote I was completely vindicated now I'm reading here from a fact sheet and if you look below you can get a copy of the fact sheet so don't worry about that so I'm reading from this Right, okay. Now, as I said, building power stations is the most expensive process you can imagine, or one of the most. And I'm here to save the country from doing this. After the Second World War, we, uh, our forefathers and our foremothers had to really pull together to uh, get the country back on its feet. The country was flat on its back. We've also had the devastation of COVID, and we haven't had as near as many deaths as we have due to the, in, as we did in the Second and First World War. However, it has devastated this country. So here, I'm hoping that you will do your bit to help bring the country back on its feet. So let's start first things first. Right, so first thing first, if you are um, if you're paying for your energy use your prepayment meter, please, please, please transfer to a normal meter. A prepayment meter is by far the most expensive way of paying for your fuel. In some cases, not all, you may be paying a higher price for it. So please get on a prepayment meter. Now, if you live in rented accommodation, your landlord may not be able to let you because a lot of landlords don't want to be lumbered with big, a huge bill when the tenant leaves. I rent out of accommodation myself. So there's a way around this. All you do is you just take a meter reading on the day you leave and ask for an updated bill. Simple as. It may be the case that a if you're in rented accommodation that your energy supplier may want to deposit off you if you want to go on a normal meter that is true but that would be nothing compared to the cost of a prepayment meter because they are very expensive for two reasons one you're paying a higher rate and two you're lumbered with huge big bills in winter and in winter you don't want huge big bills because you've got all the expense of christmas so we don't want that so if you are on a prepayment meter please try and get that changed next thing very important i don't care which supplier you're with please 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 go on a budget plan 
commonly if you go on a budget plan you might get you sometimes get a lower unit rate so it, it works out marginally cheaper but the advantage of a budget plan is they estimate how much you, my energy you're going to use and they split the payment over 12 equal installments this goes a long way to preventing high winter bills and you don't want to have big bills at christmas and with christmas obviously the occurs in december but it's the coldest time of year that can save you a lot of financial distress if you're on uh, on a budget plan <clears throat> next thing meter readings please 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 make sure that at the very minimum once a month you submit a meter reading what i do is every week well whenever i go into my cellar where my meter is i go to my mo t basically take a meter reading and submit it submitting a meter reading weekly goes a long way to stopping you from being inappropriately billed now unless of course you're on a, some kind of contract where every time you submit a meter reading a bill is generated don't do it. that's the only situation i won't do it but submitting meter reading um, weekly is great now bring me to the next point <clears throat> um i signed up my family for an interchange of energy to provide them in 2014. what then went and happened was that no meter reading was submitted and my dad passed away in 2016. no meter reading was submitted for about two years and when I started submitting meter readings, I found something to my horror. They've been grossly underestimated how much energy my parents were using. And the arrears were phenomenal. And basically the monthly budget plan went up enormously. It, it was a nightmare to sort out. The arrears were paid off, but it could have been avoided if they submitted a meter reading regularly. So please make sure you do this. Now let's get onto the nitty gritty stuff, okay? first things first something that you can do today one your mobile phone please do not leave it being charged overnight it wastes a lot of energy if you do that an hour in the evening when you come home from work is more usually more than enough if you leave it overnight you can actually damage your battery so just charge it in the evening when you get when uh, from zero to full in the evening and then it, and usually once every 24 hours is sufficient now here's the thing once a month let it drain to completely zero and get it recharged that will do a wonders to preserve the life of your battery but don't leave your mobile phone to charge overnight same applies to your tv your video system dvd player and your pc don't leave them on standby overnight switch them off on top of that if you can if you have a laser printer don't leave it on standby overnight they can, if you leave a, a laser printer on overnight, it uses a phenomenal amount of energy. So please uh, switch them all off at night, if, if it's at all, or, or if at all possible. Now, if we all do the thing about the mobile phone, the TV, the video, the satellite system, the DVD player, the Xbox, um, and what's the other one? The, um, the mobile phone, we can save at least, at least the output of one power station a year. So that's something we can do instantly. It won't cost us anything. Next thing is, if you have um, a gas boiler in your property, please make sure you get it serviced once a year. I have a little note in my diary that, uh, that pops up around about the end of January every year, beginning of February, reminding me to get my gas boiler serviced. And I always get it serviced in summer. Between, uh, well, actually, between February and September, I get it serviced, usually in March. That's the, one of the quietest times a year for gas engineers, and it makes good sense to do that. It is a requirement of my insurance. Now, let's take the worst case scenario. The worst, the worst case, well, let me take the best case scenario. Best case scenario, you ring up in early February, get an appointment pretty quickly. It's done very, uh, very soon, a minimum of fuss with minimal disruption in summer like or spring, okay? Um, worst case scenario, what happened to my ex? She never got round to it. She never found the time to get to get it serviced. And what happened? In winter, her boiler broke down. Because she hadn't ser had it serviced for 18 months, her insurance didn't cover her. And what happened was, she had no, uh, no boiler cover, no boiler. She had to use electrical fan heaters to heat the house. Um, they had no hot water, so they had to have cold showers and everything. 
and eventually they ended up in arrears the uh, energy companies and end up with fee payment meters a nightmare that could have been avoided very simply by getting it serviced uh, on time so get your gas boiler serviced on time get it done between february and september the, uh, the closer to february the, the better now um electrical apply well uh, listen draft excluder it is important that all your doors windows and letter boxes have appropriate draft excluder on them you will not believe how much and how much cold air and heat you can lose due to uh, uh, gaps in, in, in draft excluding okay if you've got gaps around your windows and your doors you can lose quite a bit of heat and that wastes energy and ultimately wastes money draft excluder is cheap just put it on okay you, you, somewhere in your local community there's a hardware store get some put in now some double glazed windows and doors have it, have it pre, pre done but if not get it installed it's very cheap okay needless appliances if you've got any needless appliances if possible switch them off now that does not apply to LED light bulbs LED light bulbs are cheaper if you just leave them on now that's important because for security reasons if you have um, a back door or an alleyway or something leave for security reasons leave the light on um, lit up doorways go a long way to prevent burglaries and as I said you've got LED lights or fluorescent dawn to dusk lights they, go, they are very energy efficient so leave those on <clears throat> washing machines and tumble dryers this is important first of all any appliances that you do have in that in the home please 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 try to make sure they're a grade uh, in terms of efficiency yes there is a financial financial outlay but in the long run it will save you money now in America uh, your energy company will give you interest-free loans for this in fact in some parts of America if you exchange your fridge freezer for a more efficient model they will actually give you a $100 bond towards it why we don't do this I don't know I really can't understand this now your washing machine um, if you've got a washing machine please 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 make sure you only turn it on when you have a full load none of this putting one or two items in the washing machine uh, for the, and basically turn it on no make sure you've got a full load that could because it uses the same amount of energy regardless of how much you put in so make sure you get your money's worth use a full load <coughs> also make sure you use the correct temperature and uh, the right amount of detergent for for hygiene reasons please make sure that whenever you do the washing as long as it affects your clothing put a teaspoonful of laundry bleach in okay that's important in terms of drying your clothes the most energy efficient and most cost effective method of drying your clothes is obviously to hang them out outside now at this time of year it may be a little bit more difficult because it really because it's not summer that said even in the winter as long as it's dry and there's some air movement you can dry your clothes but either partially or wholly at this time of year I put my clothes out to dry and sometimes they don't get they don't dry in full but I can finish them off in the tumble dryer but obviously in summer it's not a problem and that can bring your bills down enormously <sighs> what mentioned dishwashers <clears throat> if you have a dishwasher again the same applies get an a-grade model but if you have to turn it on make sure you have a full load otherwise basically you're not getting value for your money the next one never seems to amaze me close the doors and windows yes I get it's important to open the, the uh, doors and windows to avoid condensation but do keep them closed most of the time basically to keep the heat in I used to live with students and it, it, it was it was of stupidity the amount of times they leave the doors and windows open and wonder why the house was so cold now next thing the kettle um, if you like a cup of tea or coffee that's great but don't be like one of my members of staff he want, might want one cup of tea or coffee but he'll fill the kettle all the way to the top it's not necessary just fill up what you need what the best thing to do if it's only for one person some kettles have a minimum level just do just do enough to just fill it up to cover the elements and that's normally fine if it's having one person cookers now if you've got a gas cooker make sure the flame doesn't go around the outside of the pan otherwise you're basically heating the air <clears throat> just basically the base and the same applies to your electrical 
if you've got something to simmer when the water's boiling once it's there you don't need much energy to actually keep it boiling it takes very little so once it's boiling you don't you, you can turn the heat down a bit okay that can save quite a bit of energy ovens <clears throat> The stupidity of students when it comes to this never ceases to amaze me. Some students have been known to try and cut their heating bill by leaving the oven, o uh, oven on and basically let, let the heat come out and heat the house that way. That's very, very, very expensive. I just shudder when I see students doing this. Now the fridge freezer, uh, the fridge in the freezer. You need to count out how many shelves there are in your fridge. Now I've got four in mine. And what you need to do, you need to get eight uh, cooling elements for, uh, for your fridge freezer. What I do, I keep um, f four in my freezer, four in my fridge. Every morning when I come down for breakfast, open up the, fr the freezer, take four out and swap them over. If you put these cooling elements or co come in as ice packs, they're, they're basically they're kept in, uh, it's water kept in, um, pla in plastic. What happens is you lower the temperature of the fridge con considerably saving energy talking of the fridge one thing is very important once a week you need to go behind the fridge and clean the, the, the uh, exchange uh, element at the back the heat exchanger at the back because if it's dusty it won't exchange heat that well and that again can waste energy now in the 1980s there was a health minister called Edwina Curry and she caused absolute uproar when she told uh, the uh, pensioners of the UK to cut their heat, save their heating bills by putting on some extra layers. Although it's controversial she was absolutely right. Now guys at this time of year learn from the ladies. Ladies tend to wear tights at this time of year to keep them warm. You should do the same. Now I'm not saying you go and buy a pair of tights. You don't want to be accused of all sorts of things or get to get uh, making of your mates. Bearing in mind, if you're a soldier and you go on attachment, uh, if you go on exercise in a cold environment, you are expected to have tights on underneath. If you don't, your regimental sergeant major will give you the biggest dressing down you can imagine. What I do at this time of year is I wear two pairs of tracksuit trousers uh, in winter. It goes a long way to keeping you warm. Now, yes, I sometimes get flat from people who are about it, but I can just say to them, you can laugh as much as you bloody well like. I'm really warm. My heating levels. My mum didn't believe me when I told her this, but this cut our fuel bill enormously. What I do at this time of year, I set the heat, the room thermostat. You should all have a room thermostat. I leave it at 20 degrees C constantly, okay? Because once you've got your heating at 20 degrees C, it takes very little energy to keep it there, not much at all. Whereas if you if you heat, uh, let your heating come on, and let's say six o'clock in the morning till about half nine let it cool down and being honest but at four o'clock and nine o'clock it cools down and comes back again that takes a lot of energy once you've got it to 20 it basically takes very little energy to keep it there the same applies to your hot water if you've got hot water tank <coughs> <coughs> sorry no, um just got dry some more dry air here same applies to your hot water tank if you've got a hot water tank Put your heat, uh, put your hot water, let's say 60 degrees C, not more, more than that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it more than that. And keep it on constant. What happens is you've got to heat your hot, uh, your hot water in there to 60 degrees C. Let's say you have a shower, you lose 10 liters. You only have to heat that 10 liters of water. Once you've got it there at 60 degrees C, it takes very little energy to keep it there. Where it's the same applies. If you heat your hot water, let's say 6 a.m. to about half nine, then it cools down if you turn your heat hot water off at around four o'clock you bring it back on again you're going to heat all that water up again waste a lot of energy it takes a very little energy to keep it there once you've got it there obviously if you've got a combi boiler that's not necessary now your pipes lag your pipes that's important very cheap to lag your pipes it goes a long way to prevent uh, to save energy on top of that one thing is very very important if you're a student and you go away over the, over the Christmas, and uh, please, please, please make sure you turn the stop cock off and you leave the heating on constant for reasons I've discussed beforehand. And I'll tell you why. Because if you leave the heating on constant when you go away, that prevents a pipe burst. If you do get a pipe burst and you've left turned the stop cock off, 
you will only lose a trickle of water. Now, when I was a student, this actually did happen. My next door neighbors did not turn the stopcock off. And when they came back, they found the whole house was flooded. I remember, never forget when they opened the door, they found it difficult to open the door. And when they did, water just gushed out. The whole house was ruined. Now, what I had done at the same time, the plumber came round to sort it all out. House was ruined. The landlord was not particularly happy, to say the very least. Uh, plumber came out. I said, mate, can you help me with my house? He goes, oh, no. I said, no. What I did was I turned the stopcock off and he came to, into my cellar. We turned the stopcock on. We only lost about a little trickle of water. Oh, I said, this will be covered by a call-out fee. Got a bit of pipe out, puts him in. <coughs> it was covered by the call-out fee. Great very important next thing light bulbs very very important if you've got light bulbs if you've got LED ones just leave them on okay turn them off at night when you go to bed but otherwise just leave them on it, they take very little energy and as I said it costs more to actually turn them on and off on and off on and off than it is to keep on constant okay that's the same with LED light bulbs okay the bathroom and kitchen if you can afford it get yourself an extractor fan to avoid condensation but every so often do make sure you do open the window to get some uh, fresh air in if you can afford it get cavity wall insulation very important you could, you'll be amazed how much heat you can lose through cavity walls um, windows and doors try to get double glazing for your windows and doors again you'll be amazed how much money you can, you can save by doing that Radiators, they should be, called, should be called radiators, they're actually convectors, they're actually um, heat rooms by convection, not by radiation. Now what actually happens is, uh, if you can, find a way to basically put aluminium foil behind the radiator, okay, using cardboard or whatever, because that reflects heat back into the room. And don't block the radiator, otherwise you stop the heat from getting to your, getting to, 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 to your rooms. Leave a gap between your radiator and the furniture. Fan heaters. Now, unless it's a medical reason, try not to use them. They, it's basically like burning money. Okay. Let's go for this. And that's largely it. Okay. If you do what I've mentioned here, you'll go a long, long way to cutting your bills. A long way. We've cut our bills from £161 a month to £101 a month. And it's made a very, very big difference because I've seen a lot of people hurting because of rising fuel prices. We're not affected. So please, please, please do take what I've said seriously. If you look below, you'll see a fact sheet that you can, you can link to get a fact sheet. Download the fact sheet, implement what I've said, and I look forward to hearing that, you, that you've saved the money in the bills. After the Second World War and after the First World War, people had to pull together to, for the country's sake. We must do the same with energy now because the country is short of energy. Please, please, please do this. Your country needs you. Thank you very much for your time. I speak to you soon. Stay safe and I welcome your comments below. Bye bye.